Here's a way to make a neckband that does not require hanging any stitches. This is the short road band on my new top. I'm going to show you how to make it. We're knitting a short road trim for a neckband. These have been in hold, but they're going to go back to work now. And we'll knit six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three stitches on the side away from the carriage in the hole by pulling them forward. And because we've got this set on one, and there is a very similar setting on most machines, these stitches will stay in hold with the needles forward. Knit one row across. Put one additional needle next to those already holding in hold. This will avoid a hole in the fabric. If you wanted a hole for a design feature, you could use one, but in this case I don't. Knit across, and we're back where we started. Back to work. Six rows. Two, three, four, five, six. Three in the hold. Knit across. One additional needle in the hold. Knit across. And back to work. Okay, let me show you how we're going to get this band on. This one's halfway done. I started at this end with the bind off because it was nice and neat and I want to work in that direction. It's easier for me to sew that direction plus I want the right hand edge to overlap as though this was a real band and it finishes the top of the placket and then I'll eventually sew this button onto it. But the first stage is done by basting. The inside edge of this sweater neck is not especially pretty because we did it with simple increases and decreases. The decreases are prettier than the increases, but we're going to hide them all. Remember, we made this band so that one edge is narrower than the other by means of short rowing. So the narrow edge goes to the inside neck edge. We baste it all around to make sure that we are satisfied with how it's laying, that it's not puckering, it's not gathering. It's not stretching the neckline and it hangs well on the person. Then with matching sewing thread and a needle, and I think that it does really have to be needle and thread, we go around and do two other lines of stitching. This part has been done. I would have to get around the camera to see. We're whip stitching the edge down here and also along here, and then I'll give it a light pressing very light with a pressing cloth just just a little steam because I want it to be flat but not killed and certainly not shiny it naturally curves to the edge but I do want it to be a little bit flatter and steam will do that for us there you can see a couple of my stitches on the inside they don't show on the outside at all where I'm allowing the outside edge of the band this one to roll in just a little bit and stitching it down as a fold. That's one reason I need to press it to be thicker. I like the look of that edge. It would be flatter if I unrolled it completely. Let's see if I can do that. And that's also an acceptable thing to do if you'd prefer. However, it is not on the inside. We're purposely wanting those that short road edge to roll over what's remaining. And that's how that'll be when it's finished. I haven't finished um, whip stitching here. So the inside will look quite neat because the last roughly four stitches are just rolling to the inside. You can stitch them there if you want or you can just let them cover it. It doesn't really matter. To review, a line of basting. You can pin first if you want. Then whip stitching at the outer edge and whip stitching at the inner edge where that one's done. Use small stitches and don't bite all the way through the fabric. We do not want to see especially this row of stitches on the outside, but even the standard gauge version, gauge version is plump enough fabric you can hide those stitches well.